Hello and welcome to the Italian Embassy in Paris for this new edition of the interview on France 24. Today we bring you an exclusive interview with Italy's new Prime Minister, Mario Monti, a well-respected economist and former EU Commissioner. Mr Monti has vowed to rebuild confidence in Italy's battered public finances. Mr Monti, thank you for having us. Thank now, you. In Paris, you met the French president, Nicolas Sarkozy. You also met the French prime minister. What did you discuss? We discussed uh, the uh, timely and important issue of how to build fast um, a new confidence uh, on the Eurozone's future. Um, the euro has been a great success as a currency. It's not in danger as a currency, but because of the um, uh, sovereign debt problems in several of our countries, the euro area is not exactly stable and inspiring every confidence uh, in the markets uh, worldwide. That's because it's crucial that in the next few weeks, uh, Europe comes to act together to fully reinforce this uh, uh, governance of the Eurozone. Now, you said the Euro is not in danger, yet this week uh, the Euro debt crisis has resurfaced with a vengeance. Uh, and this despite what was called a historic meeting, a historic council meeting in Brussels on December 9th. Why is it that the markets don't trust the Euro and don't trust the EU leaders? I wouldn't say that they don't trust the euro because the euro, since its creation uh, and including now, may go up and down a bit in the short term, but is a very stable and a very strong uh, currency, both in terms of purchasing power in goods and services uh, and in terms of foreign exchange. Uh, where the confidence is not entirely there, and understandably so, is on one simple aspect. Has the Eurozone a governance which is effective enough in handling this very asymmetric distribution of deficits, deficits and debts among its uh, component countries? Because in the aggregate, the Eurozone has a, a deficit to GDP which is smaller than the US or the UK or Japan, but it is very unevenly distributed, as we know. So, uh, not being uh, uh, a set of independent countries with their currencies, not being either a united country, a fully united country with a, a single currency, uh, it poses new problems. Of but government. are you confident that there is a willingness on behalf of Germany, of France and other Eurozone countries to build this the, economic governance? Uh, I'm sure there is a willingness. There hasn't always been so far, including at the level of the heads of governments, a full awareness of what that willingness requires in terms of concrete acts and in terms of concrete implementation, delivery of the decisions that by now too many historic meetings have made. Now let's talk about the situation back at home in Italy. Uh, since you were appointed in uh, November, you've passed a 33 billion euro uh, package of tax, hires, uh, tax hikes and spending cuts. This is a very ambitious plan and yet your long-term borrowing costs remain at an alarmingly high level across 7%. This is uh, a level which forced countries such as Ireland or Greece to request a bailout. Why do you think it is that the, the, the borrowing costs remain so high despite all the measures that you took? Well, let's, uh, let's read what all market analysis uh, uh, and, invest and investment newsletters are, are writing. They are writing, well, Italy has, has done remarkably well and quickly in uh, doing its own homework in terms of budgetary consolidation. Uh, of course, it's ne it needs higher growth in order also to make this consolidation sustainable in the longer term. But why are interest rates at 7%? All these uh, 
market evaluations will tell you that that is because Italy being in the euro area, and of course with a high debt to GDP ratio, everything that makes markets a bit nervous about uh, the governance of the euro area reflects particularly on a country like Italy. So it's no longer an Italian premium which keeps uh, that 7% alive, it is rather a euro area premium. So I guess what you're calling for at this stage is, for instance, for Eurozone uh, countries to beef up the, the rescue fund, the so-called EFSF. How are you going to convince Germany, which so far has been completely reluctant to that idea? Not completely reluctant, but uh, indeed very cautious um, and also a bit uh, slow uh, to uh, act. Well, it's, uh, first of all, the more money is put up, the less likely it is that it needs to be effectively used, used in fact, because... So you're telling Germany act now before it's too late? Yes, and uh, uh, the more you act, the, the less you will have to disburse. And more generally, and this is a fundamental point, uh, of course, uh, Germany, well, we all benefit enormously from the existence of a single currency, and Germany is no exception. The German economy, German industry, German banks, the German public draws great benefits. But from you will agree the that the current situation is unsustainable for your country because this is a vicious circle. 7%, this makes your debt even bigger than it is now. Uh, how, how long can you keep up paying the, this, this, this rate? Um, well, the, the, the term structure of the Italian uh, government debt uh, is quite uh, long. So whatever happens to the markets uh, in the short term uh, will not uh, unduly influence the overall average cost of financing the Italian debt. But certainly it's very important that the rates come down uh, both as a relief to the budget, secondly, because we know that interest rates uh, in the end reflect on the cost of credit to companies, and also because the Italian public opinion needs to see that concretely, uh, as it has accepted a considerable degree of austerity, there are beneficial consequences for companies and... Uh, but you don't foresee in the near future that a bailout will be inevitable? A, a bailout of Italy will, uh, will not be necessary. Uh, we are doing uh, more than, I would say, most if not all other EU member states have done to put uh, uh, the public finance of Italy on course and, uh, and obviously we are not working in a perspective like the one you mentioned and, and that I don't want to repeat. Now France announced that it will decide on a financial transaction tax by the end of the month, the so-called Tobin tax. I know that Tobin was uh, one of your professors at Yale University. Uh, France says we want to set an example for Europe. If the other countries don't want to follow suit, we'll go alone and hopefully they will uh, jump on the bandwagon. What is your position? Do you welcome a tax on uh, financial transactions? Would your country be interested? Well, Italy, uh, with my government, has uh, um, adopted a different position relative to the previous government on this aspect. Uh, we have uh, uh, become open to the idea of a transaction tax. We will work in the context of the European Union towards such a tax, um, which, which is a novelty for Italy, uh, one that uh, France and Germany and others welcome. Um, I would uh, uh, hesitate strongly uh, to have an individual country go uh, its own way on this one. Um, I'm not in the position to assess uh, what uh, France is doing or wants to do. Uh, it's true that uh, individual examples may be helpful to lead uh, the others. 
Now, during this crisis, Angela Merkel and Nicolas Sarkozy have taken a central stage. Uh, this has irritated some smaller countries and it has certainly been done to the detriment of the European institutions. Do you share this view and do you regret this? Well, the Franco-German couple, to use a traditional expression, is, uh, is an indispensable, is a very necessary condition for Europe to make progress. I believe it is not sufficient. I'm sure that neither Germany nor France believe that it is in itself sufficient. And, uh, uh, and my view is that these uh, geometries of less than 17 member states for the Eurozone or less than 27 member states for the whole of the EU have a useful purpose uh, insofar as they uh, do not conflict with uh, the possibility of dealing with the, these issues uh, within the community method, uh, which has worked uh, very well over several decades. So I think it is uh, uh, positive, not harmful, that uh, Germany and France continue to try and to act together. I think it's positive for Italy uh, to be called uh, to give uh, a contribution up to the potential of Italy, which I think is remarkable. Uh, and uh, I think all this is positive and it should be our care to avoid that it becomes divisive. Mario Monti, Prime Minister of Italy, we'll have to leave it there as we're running out of time. But thank you very much for talking to us. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this edition of the interview on France 24. Please stay tuned on our channel for more news. Thank <laughs> you.